the beginning of the good message of Yahshua Christ, son of Yahweh. Just as it is written in Isaiah, the prophet, Behold, I send my messenger before your face who shall prepare your way. A voice crying out in the wilderness, Make ready the way of Yahweh, make straight his paths. Johannes the Baptist was in the desert proclaiming an immersion of repentance for a remission of errors, and all the land of Judea and all those in Jerusalem went out to him, and they were immersed by him in the river Jordan, acknowledging their errors. And Johannes was clothed in camel's hair, and a belt of skin around his loins, and eating locusts, and wild honey. And he proclaimed, saying, He who is more powerful than me comes after me, of whom I am not worthy bending over to loosen the straps of his sandals. I have immersed you in water, but he shall immerse you in the Holy Spirit. And it happened in those days that Yahshua had come from Nazareth of Galilee and was immersed in the Jordan by Johannes. And immediately upon ascending out of the water he saw the heavens dividing and the Spirit as a dove descending to him. And a voice came from out of heaven, You are my beloved Son, in you I am satisfied. And immediately the Spirit drove him out into the desert. And he was in the desert for forty days, being tried by the adversary, and he was with the beasts. Yet the messengers served him. And after the handing over of Johannes, Yahshua had gone into Galilee, proclaiming the good message of Yahweh, and saying that, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of Yahweh has neared. Repent, and have faith in the good message. And passing by the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and Andreas, the brother of Simon, casting around nets in the sea, for they were fishermen. And Yahshua said to them, Come after me, and I shall make you to be fishers of men. And immediately leaving the nets, they followed him. And going on a little, he saw James the son of Zebedaios, and Johannes his brother, and those in the vessel repairing the nets, and right away he called them. And leaving Zebedaios their father in the vessel with the hired hands, they departed after him. And they go into Capernaum, and immediately on the Sabbaths, entering into the assembly hall, he taught. And they were astonished by his teaching, for he was teaching them as if having authority and not as the scribes. And there was right away in their assembly hall a man with an unclean spirit, and he had cried out, saying, What is there with us and with you, Yahshua the Nazarene? Have you come to destroy us? I know whom you are, the Holy One of Yahweh. And Yahshua admonished him, saying, Be silent and come out from him. And the unclean spirit, convulsing him and crying out with a great voice, came out from him. And they were all amazed, so as for them to dispute, saying, What is this, a new doctrine with authority? And he commands the unclean spirits, and they obey him. And the report of it went out at once everywhere, in the whole surrounding region of Galilee. And immediately coming out from the assembly hall, they went into the house of Simon and Andreas with James and Johannes. And the mother-in-law of Simon was laid down, being with fever, and right away they speak to him about her. And having gone forth, grasping her hand, he raised her, and the fever left her, and she served them. And upon its becoming late, when the sun sank, they brought to him all those having maladies and those being possessed by demons and the whole city was gathering together by the door. And he healed many being ill with various diseases, and he cast out many demons, yet he did not allow the demons to speak, because they knew him to be the Christ. And in the morning, having arisen very late at night, he went out and departed into a desert place, and there he prayed. And Simon and those with him pursued soon after him, and they found him, and say to him that they all seek you. And he says to them, We should go elsewhere into the neighboring towns, in order that I shall proclaim there. For this reason have I come. And he went proclaiming in their assembly halls, and casting out demons in the whole of Galilee. And there comes to him a leper, exhorting him, saying to him that, If you desire, you are able to cleanse me. And being deeply moved, extending his hand, he touched him and says to him, I desire, be cleansed. And immediately the leprosy departed from him, 
and he had been cleansed. And admonishing him at once, he drove him away and says to him, See that you say nothing to no one, but go show yourself to the priest and offer for your cleansing that which Moses has commanded for a testimony to them. But going off, he began to proclaim many things and to spread the account, so that for him to no longer be able to enter openly into the city, but he was outside in the desert places, and they came to him from everywhere. And entering again into Capernaum, for days it was heard that he is in a house, and many had gathered together so as no longer to have space, not even there by the door. And he spoke the word to them, and they come bringing to him a paralytic being carried by four men. And not being able to bring him forth to him because of the crowd, they had taken off the roof where he was, and digging through, lowered the cot upon which the paralytic laid. And Yahshua, seeing their faith, says to the paralytic, Child, your errors are remitted. Now there were some scribes sitting there and debating in their hearts, Who is he that he speaks thusly? He blasphemes. Who is able to forgive errors except one, God? And immediately, Yahshua, knowing in his spirit that they debate among themselves, thusly says to them, Why do you debate these things in your hearts? What is easier to say to the paralytic, Your errors are remitted, or to say, Arise and take up your cot and walk? But in order that you would know that the Son of Man has authority to forgive errors upon the earth, he says to the paralytic, I say to you, Arise, taking your cot, and go to your house. And he arose, and immediately taking the cot, he went out before them all. So as for all to be astounded, and to extol Yahweh, saying that we have not ever seen so much. And he went out again by the sea, and all the crowd came with him, and he taught them. And going by, he saw Levi, the son of Alphaeus, sitting at the tax office, and he says to him, Follow me. And arising, he followed him. And it comes to pass upon his reclining in his house that many tax collectors and wrongdoers were reclining together with Yahshua and his students. There were many indeed, and they followed him. And the scribes of the Pharisees, seeing that he eats with the wrongdoers and tax collectors, said to his students that he eats with tax collectors and wrongdoers. And hearing it, Yahshua says to them that the strong have no need of a physician, but the sick do have. I have not come to call the righteous, but wrongdoers. And the students of Johannes and the Pharisees were fasting. And they come and say to him, for what reason do the students of Johannes and the students of the Pharisees fast, but your students do not fast? And Yahshua said to them, Are the sons of the bride chamber able to fast while the bridegroom is with them? For as long a time as they have the bridegroom with them, they are not able to fast. But the days shall come when the bridegroom is taken from them, and then shall they fast in that day. No one sews a patch of uncarded cloth upon an old garment, but if it is, the new lifts its borders away from the old, and the tear becomes worse. And no one puts new wine into old skins, but if it is, the wine breaks the skins, and the wine and the skins are lost. Rather, new wine is for new skins. And it came to pass for him on the Sabbaths to be passing through the planted fields, and his students began to make a path, plucking the grain. And the Pharisees said to him, Look, why do they do on the Sabbaths that which is not lawful? And he says to them, Have you not ever read what David did, when he had need, and he himself had hungered, and those with him? How he entered into the house of Yahweh at the time of Abiathar the high priest, and he ate the bread of presentation, which is not lawful to eat except for the priests? And he gave it also to those being with him. And he said to them, The Sabbath was for the sake of man, and not man for the sake of the Sabbath. Therefore the Son of Man is Prince of the Sabbath. And again he had entered into the assembly hall, and there was a man there having a withered hand, and they were watching him closely, whether he will heal him on the Sabbaths 
in order that they may accuse him. And he says to the man having the withered hand, Arise into the middle. And he says to them, Is it lawful on the Sabbath to do good, or to do bad, to save a life, or to kill? But they were silent. And looking around at them with anger, being grieved by the hardness of their hearts, he says to the man, Extend the hand. And he extended it and his hand had been restored. And the Pharisees, departing immediately with the Herodians, gave counsel against him, how they may destroy him. And Yahshua withdrew to the sea with his students, and a great multitude from Galilee followed, and from Judea, and from Jerusalem, and from Idumea, and across the Jordan, and around Turos and Sidon, a great multitude, hearing what things he does, came to him. And he spoke to his students, in order that a boat should be waiting ready for him, for reason that the crowd would crush him. For he had healed many so as to fall upon him as many as had afflictions, in order that they may touch him. And the unclean spirits, when they saw him, fell before him and cried out, saying that, You are the Son of Yahweh. And he admonished them often, that they should not make him known. And he ascends into the mountain and summons those whom he himself had desired, and they came out to him. And he made the twelve, those whom he also named ambassadors, that they should be with him, and that he would send them to proclaim and to have authority to cast out demons. And he made these the twelve, Simon, whom he also labelled with the name Petros, and James the son of Zebedaios, and Johannes the brother of James. And he labelled them with the name Boanerges, which is sons of thunder, and Andreas, and Philippos, and Bartholomaios, and Matthaios, and Thomas, and James the son of Alphaios, and Thaddaeus, and Simon the Cananean, and Judas Iscariot, he who also betrayed him. And he comes into a house, and the crowd comes along again, consequently for them not to be able even to eat bread. And hearing it, those of his relations came out to seize him, for they said that he is insane. And the scribes coming down from Jerusalem said that he has Beelzebub, and that by the ruler of demons he casts out demons. And summoning them, he spoke to them in parables. How is Satan able to cast out Satan? And if a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom is not able to stand. And if a house is divided against itself, that house shall not be able to stand. And if Satan stood up against himself and is divided, he is not able to stand, but has an end. Rather, no one is able to enter into the house of the strong man to plunder his equipment, unless one could first bind the strong man and then he shall plunder his house. Truly I say to you that all errors shall be remitted for the sons of men, and whatever blasphemies they may blaspheme. But he who blasphemes to the Holy Spirit, he does not have remission for ever, but is liable for eternal guilt. Because they said he has an unclean spirit. And his mother comes and his brethren, and standing outside they sent to him, summoning him, and a crowd sat around him, and they said to him, Behold, your mother and your brothers seek you outside. And replying to them, he says, Who is my mother and my brethren? And looking about at those sitting around him, he says, Behold, my mother and my brethren. For he who should do the will of Yahweh, he is my brother and sister and mother. And again he began to teach by the sea, and a very large crowd gathers to him, so as for him boarding into a vessel to sit in the sea. And all the crowd was by the sea upon the land, and he taught them with many parables, and said to them in his teaching, Listen, behold, the sower has come out to sow. And it happened during the sowing that some fell by the road, and having come the birds then devoured them, and others fell upon the rocks, where they did not have much earth, and immediately sprang up on account of not having deep earth. And when the sun arose, they burned, and on account of not having root, they withered. And others fell into the thorns, 
and the thorns rose up and strangled them, and they did not give fruit. And others fell into the good earth, and rising up and growing gave fruit, and one had borne thirtyfold, and one sixty, and one a hundred. And he said, He who has an ear to hear must hear. And when he was alone, those of his relations with the twelve asked him about the parables, and he said to them, To you the mystery of the kingdom of Yahweh is given, but to those outside all things come in parables, that looking they should look and should not see, and hearing they should hear and should not understand, that at no time should they repent, and it would be forgiven them. And he says to them, You do not perceive this parable? Then how shall you know any parables? The sower sows the word. Now these are those by the road where he sows the word, and when they hear it, immediately the adversary comes and takes the word sown in them. And these are those being sown upon the rocks, which when they should hear the word, receive it immediately with joy. And they do not have root in themselves, but are temporary, since upon the coming of tribulation or persecution on account of the word, immediately they are entrapped. And the others are those being sown in the thorns. These are those hearing the word, and the cares of this age, and the deceit of riches and desires for the future entering in strangle the word, and it becomes fruitless. And these are they having been sown upon the good earth, who hear and take up the word and bear fruit, one thirtyfold, and one sixty, and one a hundred. And he said to them, does any lamp go that is set under a basket or under a cot, not that is set upon a lampstand? For it is not hidden except that it should be revealed, nor has it been concealed, but in order that it would come to be evident. If one has an ear to hear, he must hear. And he said to them, Watch how you listen. With the measure by which you measure it shall be measured for you, and it shall be added to you. For he who has, it shall be given to him. And he who has not, even that which he has shall be taken from him. And he said, Thusly is the kingdom of Yahweh like a man who would cast seed upon the earth, and sleeps and arises night and day, and the seed sprouts and lengthens how he does not know. By itself the earth bears fruit, first grass, then the stalk, then the fullness of the grain on the stalk. And when the fruit would be delivered, immediately he sends out the scythe, because the harvest is at hand. And he said, How should we liken the kingdom of Yahweh, or in what parable may we place it? It is as a grain of mustard, which when it is sown upon the earth, it is the smallest of all the seeds of those upon the earth. And when it is sown, it comes up and becomes greater than all of the vegetables and produces great branches, so for the birds of heaven to be able to nest in its shadow. And with many such parables he spoke to them the word, just as they were able to hear, and without a parable he did not speak to them, but by himself expounded all things to his own students. And he says to them on that day, it being late, we should go across to the other side. And having left the crowd, they took him as he was in the vessel, and other vessels were with his. And there came a great tempest of wind, and the waves cast upon the vessel, so for the vessel to be already filled. And he was in the stern, sleeping upon a cushion. And they arouse him and say to him, Teacher, is it not a concern to you that we are destroyed? And waking up, he admonished the wind, and said to the sea, Silence! Be muzzled! And the wind abated, and there came a great calm. And he said to them, Why are you cowards? Not yet do you have faith. And they feared a great fear, and said to one another, So who is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? And they came to the other side of the sea, to the region of the Gadarenes. And upon his coming out from the vessel, immediately a man with an unclean spirit from among the tombs met him, who had a dwelling among the tombs, and not even in chains was anyone any longer able to bind him. 
on account that often he having been bound in fetters and chains, and the chains being torn apart by him, and the fetters being shattered, and no one prevails to overpower him. And throughout each night and day, among the tombs and in the hills, he was crying out and cutting himself with stones. And seeing Yahshua from afar, he had run and made obeisance to him, and crying out with a great voice, says, What is there with me and with you, Yahshua, son of Yahweh the highest? I adjure you, Yahweh, do not torment me. For he had said to him, Unclean spirit, come out from the man. And he asked him, What is your name? And he says to him, Legion is my name, because we are many. And he exhorted him very much that he would not send them outside of the region. But there was there by the mountain a great herd of swine feeding. And they exhorted him, saying, Send us into the swine, that we may enter into them. And he allowed them. And the unclean spirits, having gone out, entered into the swine, and the herd rushed headlong down the bank into the sea, about two thousand, and drowned in the sea. And those feeding them fled, and reported it in the city and in the fields, and they came to see what it is which happened. And they come to Yahshua, and observe him having been possessed by demons, he who had the legion, clothed and sober-minded, and they feared. And those seeing it described for them how it happened to him possessed by demons and concerning the swine, and they began to exhort him to depart from their borders. And upon his boarding into the vessel, he having been possessed by demons, exhorts him that he could be with him. And he did not let him, but says to him, Go to your house, to those of your own, and report to them as much as Yahweh has done for you, and had pity for you. And he went off and began to proclaim in the Decapolis as much as Yahshua had done for him, and they all marveled. And upon Yahshua's going across in the vessel, back to the other side, a great crowd gathered to him, and he was by the sea. And one of the leaders of the assembly hall comes, named Yahiros, and seeing him, he falls to his feet and exhorts him very much, saying that, My daughter hangs on at the end, at which coming you may place the hands upon her, that she would be preserved and live. And he went off with him. And a great crowd followed him, and pressed together upon him. And a woman being with a flow of blood for twelve years, and being treated often by many physicians, and having spent all of her means, and having benefited nothing, but having come to be still more worse. Hearing things about Yahshua having come in from behind the crowd, grabbed his garment, for she had said that if I could grasp even his garment, I shall be saved. And immediately the source of her blood had dried up, and she perceived in the body that it had been healed from the scourge. And immediately... Yeshua, knowing within himself that there had gone out from it of his power, turning upon the crowd, said, Who grabbed my garments? And his students said to him, You see the crowd pressing together upon you, and you say, Who grabbed me? And they looked about to see she who had done this. Then the woman, being afraid and trembling, knowing that which happened to her, came and fell before him and told him the whole truth. And he said to her, Daughter, your faith has saved you. Go in peace, and you must be healthy from your scourge. Upon his still speaking, they come from the house of the assembly hall leader, saying that, Your daughter has died. Why trouble the teacher further? But Yahshua, overhearing the word being spoken, says to the assembly hall leader, Do not fear, only have faith. And he did not allow anyone to follow along with him except Petros and James and Johannes, the brother of James. And they go into the house of the assembly hall leader, and he observes a clamour of many weeping and crying. And entering, he says to them, Why do you make a clamour and weep? The child has not died, but sleeps. And they mocked him. But he, casting them all out, takes the father and the mother of the child and those with him, and goes into where the child was. And holding the hand of the child, he says to her, Talitha kum which is interpreted, Little girl, I say to you, arise. And at once the little girl arose and walked, for she was twelve years of age. 
and they were immediately confounded with great astonishment, and he ordered them severely that no one should know this, and said to give to her to eat. And he went out from there and comes into his fatherland, and his students follow him. And upon the coming of a Sabbath he began to teach in the assembly hall, and many listening were astonished, saying, From where in this man are these things? And what wisdom has been given to this man, and such powers as these coming by his hand? Is this not the craftsman, the son of Maria, and brother of James, and Yosis, and Judah, and Simon? And are his brethren not here with us? And they were offended by him. And Yahshua said to them that a prophet is not without honor except in his own fatherland, and among his kinsmen, and in his house. And he was not able to do there even one feat of power, except that he placed the hands upon and healed a few of the sick. And he marveled on account of their disbelief, and he went about the surrounding villages teaching. And he summons the twelve, and began to send them off in pairs, and gave to them authority over unclean spirits, and commanded them that they should take nothing on the road except a staff only, not bread, not a bag, not copper coin for the belt, but having bound sandals, and you should not wear two cloaks. And he said to them, Wherever you should enter into a house, you stay there until you should depart from there, and whatever place should not receive you nor hear you. Going out from there, you shake off the dust from under your feet for a testimony to them. And going out, they proclaimed, in order that they should repent. And they cast out many demons, and anointed with olive oil, and healed many sick. And Herodas the king heard, for his name became known. And he said that Johannes the Baptist has arisen from the dead, and for this reason powers operate in him. But others said that it is Elijah and others said that he is a prophet like one of the prophets. Then hearing it, Herodas said, Johannes, whom I beheaded, he has arisen. For Herodas himself having sent, seized Johannes, and bound him in prison, on account of Herodias, the wife of Philippos, his brother, because he had married her. For Johannes had said to Herodas that it is not lawful for you to have the wife of your brother. And Herodias held it against him and desired to kill him, and she was not able. For Herodas feared Johannes, knowing that he is a just and holy man. And he watched out for him, and hearing him he was often in doubt, yet gladly he heard him. And an opportune day coming, when Herodas held a dinner for his birthday with his noblemen and the commanders and the first men of Galilee, and his daughter by Herodias having entered in and dancing pleased Herodas and those reclining together. The king said to the girl, Ask me whatever you may desire, and I shall give it to you. And he swore to her, Whatever you may ask me, I shall give to you, so much as half of my kingdom. And having gone out, she said to her mother, What should I ask? And she said, For the head of Johannes the Baptist. And immediately entering into the king with zeal, she asked, saying, I desire that at once you should give to me the head of Johannes the Baptist upon a plate. And the king, becoming quite grieved on account of the oaths and those reclining together, did not want to refuse her. And immediately the king, having sent a bodyguard, commanded his head to be brought. And having departed, he beheaded him in the prison. And he brought his head upon a plate, and gave it to the girl, and the girl gave it to her mother. And his students, having heard, came and took his body and buried it in a tomb. And the ambassadors gathered to Yahshua, and they reported to him all things whatever they had done, and as much as they taught. And he says to them, You yourselves come alone into a desert place and rest a little. For there were many coming and going, and they did not even have an opportunity to eat. And they went off in a vessel to a desert place by themselves, and many saw them going, and recognized them, and running together on foot from every city to that place. Then they came ahead of them. And having come out, he saw a great crowd, and was deeply moved by them, because they were as sheep, not having a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. 
and it already having been a late hour, his students coming forth to him said that it is a desert place and already the hour is late. Release them in order that departing to the surrounding farms and villages they may buy for themselves something to eat. And replying, he said to them, You give them to eat. And they say to him, Departing could we buy two hundred denarii of wheat loaves and give to them to eat? And he says to them, How many loaves do you have? Go look. And learning they say, Five and two fish. And he commanded them all to be reclined in parties upon the grass. And they reclined in groups, some a hundred and some fifty. And taking the five loaves and the two fish, looking up to the heaven, he blessed and broke the loaves, and gave them to his students in order that they would serve them. And he divided the two fish for all, and they all ate and were satiated, and there were twelve baskets full of fragments and from the fish. And those eating the loaves were five thousand men. And immediately he compelled his students to board into the vessel and to go ahead to the other side to Bethsaida until he releases the crowd. And having disposed with them, he went off into the mountain to pray. And it becoming late, the vessel was in the midst of the sea, and he alone upon the land. And seeing them being tried while sailing, for there was a wind opposing them around the fourth watch of the night, he comes to them walking upon the sea, and he wished to pass them by. But they, seeing him walking upon the sea, supposed that it is an apparition, and they cried out, for they all saw him and were troubled, and immediately he spoke with them, and says to them, Have courage, it is I. Do not fear. And he went up to them into the vessel, and the wind abated, and they were exceedingly astonished within themselves, for they did not understand after the loaves, but their hearts were hardened. And crossing over towards the land they came to Genezareth, and they anchored nearby. And upon their coming out from the vessel, immediately recognizing him, they ran about that entire region and began to bring around upon cots those having maladies wherever they heard that he is. And wherever he entered into a village or into a city or into the farms, in the marketplaces they set down those who are sick, and they exhorted him, in order that if they could even touch the border of his garment, and as many as touched him were saved. And the Pharisees and some of the scribes, having come from Jerusalem, gather together to him. And seeing some of his students, that with profane hands, that is, unwashed, they eat bread for the Pharisees and all the Judeans, if they do not wash the hands to the elbow, they do not eat, holding to the tradition of the elders. And from the marketplace, if they do not rinse, they do not eat. And there are many other things which they undertook to hold to, washings of cups and pitchers and pots. And the Pharisees and the scribes questioned him, For what reason do your students not walk according to the tradition of the elders, but with profane hands they eat bread? But he said to them, Well did Isaiah prophesy concerning your hypocrisy. As it is written that this people honours me with their lips, but their hearts keep far from me, and vainly do they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. Leaving the commandment of Yahweh you hold to the tradition of men. And he said to them, Well do you reject the commandment of Yahweh, that you may keep your tradition. For Moses said, Honour your father and your mother. And he speaking evil of father or mother must die in sentence of death. But you say, If a man should say to father or mother, Whatever you have benefited from me is Corban, which is a gift, you no longer allow him to do anything for the father or mother, rendering void the word of Yahweh by your tradition which you have transmitted, and many such similar things which you do. And summoning the crowd again, he said to them, All must hear me and understand. There is nothing outside of the man entering into him which is able to defile him, but the things coming out from a man are the things defiling him. And when he had entered into a house away from the crowd, his students asked him the parable. And he says to them, Thusly also are you without understanding? 
do you not perceive that everything from outside entering into the man is not able to defile him, because it does not enter into his heart but into the belly, and it goes out into the latrine, cleansing all foods? Then he said that that which is coming out from the man, that would defile the man, for from inside of the hearts of men are evil reasonings coming out, acts of fornication, thefts, murders, acts of adultery, greediness, wickedness, treachery, licentiousness, an evil eye, blasphemy, arrogance, foolishness. All these wicked things come out from inside and defile the man. And arising from there he departed for the borders of Turos and Sidon, and entering into a house he desired to know no one, yet was not able to escape notice. But immediately a woman hearing about him, of whom her daughter had an unclean spirit, having come, fell to his feet. And the woman was a Greek, a Syro-Phoenician by race, and she asked him that he would cast out the demon from her daughter. And he said to her, Let the children be fed first, for it is not good to take the bread of the children and cast it to the little dogs. But she responded and says to him, Yes, master, yet the little dogs under the table eat from the crumbs of the children. And he said to her, On account of this word, go. The demon has departed from your daughter. And having gone off to her house, she found the child cast upon a couch, and the demon departed. And again coming out from the borders of Turos, he came through Sidon to the Sea of Galilee, midway between the borders of Decapolis, and they bring to him a deaf and dumb man, and exhorted him that he would lay the hand upon him. And taking him away from the crowd by himself, he put his finger into his ears, and spitting touched his tongue, and looking up to the heaven, he groaned and says to him, Ephatha, which is be opened. And his ear opened, and the binding of his tongue loosed, and he spoke correctly, and he ordered them that they should tell it to no one. But as much as he commanded them, still more abundantly they proclaimed it. And they were overabundantly astonished, saying, He has done all good things, and he makes the deaf to hear, and the mute to speak. In those days again, upon a great crowd being present and not having anything which they could eat, summoning his students, he says to them, I am deeply moved for the crowd, because already they have remained with me for three days, and they do not have anything which they may eat. And if I let them go away to their house fasting, they shall faint on the road, and some of them have come from afar. And his students replied to him that, from where is one able to feed so many bread here, in a desert place? And he asked them, How many loaves do you have? And they said, Seven. And he commands the crowd to recline upon the ground, and taking the seven loaves, giving thanks, he broke and gave them to his students that they would serve. And they served to the crowd. And they had a few fish, and blessing them, he said to serve those also. And they ate and were filled, and there were seven creels of excess fragments, and they were about four thousand, and he released them. And immediately boarding into a vessel with his students, he came into the parts of Dalmanutha, and the Pharisees came out and began to dispute with him, seeking by him a sign from heaven, trying him, and bemoaning in his spirit, he says, Why does this race seek a sign? Truly I say to you, whether a sign shall be given to this race. And leaving them boarding again, he departed for the other side, and they forgot to take bread, and except for one loaf, they did not have it with them in the vessel. And he commanded them, saying, Look, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the leaven of Herodas and they debated with one another because they do not have bread. And knowing it, he says to them, Why do you debate because you do not have bread? Not yet do you perceive nor understand. Do you have hardening of your hearts? Having eyes do you not see, and having ears do you not hear? And do you not remember, when the five loaves had been broken for the five thousand, how many baskets full of fragments you took? They say to him, Twelve. 
When the seven for the four thousand, how many creels full of fragments you took? And they say to him, Seven. And he said to them, How do you not understand? And they come into Bethsaida, and they bring to him a blind man and exhort him in order that he would touch him. And taking the hand of the blind man, he brought him outside of the town, and having spat in his eyes, putting the hands upon him, asked him if, Do you see anything? And looking up, he said, I see men, that as trees I see walking. Then again he put the hands upon his eyes, and he stared and was restored, and looked at all things clearly, and he sent him to his house, saying, Now you should not enter into the town. And Yeshua went out and his students into the town of Caesarea Philippos. And on the road he questioned his students, saying to them, What do men say for me to be? And they spoke to him, saying that Iohannes the Baptist, and others Elijah, but others that one of the prophets. And he asked them, But what do you say for me to be? Responding, Petros says to him, You are the Christ. And he admonished them that they should speak to no one concerning him. And he began to instruct them that it is necessary for the Son of Man to suffer many things, and to be rejected by the elders and the high priests and the scribes, and to be put to death and after three days to be resurrected. And he spoke the word openly. And taking him aside, Petros began to admonish him. But he, turning and seeing his students, admonished Petros, and says, Go behind me, adversary, because you do not mind the things of Yahweh, but the things of men. And summoning the crowd with his students, he said to them, if one wishes to come behind me, he must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For he who should desire to save his life shall lose it, and he who would lose his life because of me and the good message shall save it. For what shall it benefit a man to gain the whole society and for his life to be lost? For what could a man give in exchange for his life? For whoever should be ashamed of me and my words among this adulterous and sinful race. Also the Son of Man shall be ashamed of him when he should come in the honor of his Father with the holy messengers. And he said to them, Truly I say to you that there are some of those standing here whom shall by no means taste of death until they should see the kingdom of Yahweh having come with power. And after six days, Yahshua takes Petros and James and Johannes and brings them up into a high mountain by themselves alone. And he was transformed before them, and his garments became glistening exceedingly white, such that no cloth dresser upon the earth is able thusly to whiten. And Elijah appeared to them with Moses, and they were conversing with Yahshua. And responding, Petros says to Yahshua, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here, and we shall make three tents, one for you, and one for Moses, and one for Elijah. For he did not know what he should respond, for they were frightened. And there was a cloud overshadowing them, and there was a voice from out of the cloud. This is my beloved son, you hear him. And suddenly looking around, they no longer saw anyone except Yahshua alone with them. And upon their descending from the mountain, he commanded them that they should not describe to any one the things which they had seen, except when the Son of Man should arise from among the dead. And they held the account to themselves, disputing what it is to arise from among the dead. And they questioned him, saying that the scribes say that it is necessary for Elijah to come first. Then he said to them, Indeed, Elijah coming first restores all things. Yet how is it written for the Son of Man that he would suffer many things and would be despised? But I say to you that also Elijah has come, and they did with him whatever they wished, just as it is written for him. And coming with the students, they saw a great crowd around them, and scribes disputing with them, and immediately all the crowd seeing him had been amazed, and running up they greeted him. And he asked them, Why do you dispute with them? And one from out of the crowd replied to him, 
Teacher, I brought my son to you, having a speechless spirit, and wherever it should seize him, it knocks him down, and he foams and gnashes the teeth and wastes away. And I spoke to your students in order that they would cast it out, and they were not able. Then responding, he says to them, O oh, faithless race, until when shall I be with you? Until when must I put up with you? Bring him to me. And they brought him to him. And seeing him, the spirit immediately convulsed him, and falling upon the ground, he wallowed, foaming. And he asked his father, How much time is it that it has done this to him? And he said, From childhood. And often also it has cast him into a fire and into water in order that it would destroy him. But if you can do anything, help us, being deeply moved for us. But Yahshua said to him, What if you are able? All things are possible for he who believes. Immediately crying out, the father of the youth said, I believe, help me with disbelief. Then Yahshua, seeing that a crowd runs together, admonished the unclean spirit, saying to it, Speechless and dumb spirit, I command you, come out from him and enter into him no longer. And crying out and convulsing much, it came out, and he was as if dead, so for many to say that he died. But Yahshua, holding his hand, raised him, and he arose. And upon his entering into a house, his students by themselves questioned him, for what had we not been able to cast it out? And he said to them, This kind by no one is able to cast out except with prayer. And having departed from there, they went along through Galilee, and he did not wish that any one should know, for he instructed his students and said to them that the Son of Man is handed over into the hands of men, and they slay him, and dying after three days he shall arise. But they did not perceive the statement, and they were afraid to ask him. And they came into Capernaum, and being in the house, he questioned them, Why did you dispute in the road? But they were silent for they had argued with one another in the road who is greater. And sitting he called the twelve and says to them, If one wishes to be first, he shall be last of all, and a servant of all. And taking a child, he stood him in the midst of them, and putting his arm around him, said to them, Whoever should receive one of these such children upon whom is my name, receives me. And whoever would receive me, receives not me, but he who has sent me. Johannes said to him, Teacher, we saw someone casting out demons in your name and prevented him because he has not followed with us. Then Yahshua said, You must not forbid him, for there is no one who shall do a feat of power by my name and shall be able to quickly speak badly of me, for he whom is not against us is for us. For whoever would give to you to drink a cup of water in the name that you are of Christ, truly I say to you, that by no means shall he lose his reward. And he who shall entrap one of these little one who believes in me, it is good for him if rather a millstone is tied around his neck and he is cast into the sea. And if your hand should entrap you, cut it off. It is good for you to enter into life crippled than having two hands to depart into Gehenna into the unquenchable fire. And if your foot entraps you, cut it off. It is good for you to enter into life lame than having two feet to be cast into Gehenna. And if your eye should entrap you, take it out. It is good for you with one eye to enter into the kingdom of Yahweh than having two eyes to be cast into Gehenna, where their worm does not die and the fire is not quenched. For all shall be salted with fire. The salt is good, but if the salt should become saltless, with what shall you season it? Have salt among yourselves, and be at peace with one another. And arising from there, he goes into the borders of Judea, and on the other side of the Jordan. And the crowds again come together to him, and as he is accustomed, again he taught them. And the Pharisees, having come forth, questioned him whether it is lawful for a man to put away a wife, trying him. Then replying, he said to them, What did Moses command you? And they said, Moses permitted to write a letter for a bill of divorce and to put her away. Then Yahshua said to them, 
For your hardness of heart he had written this commandment for you. But from the beginning of creation he made them male and female. On account of this a man shall leave his father and mother and shall cleave to his wife, and they shall be two into one flesh. Therefore no longer are they two but one flesh, so that which Yahweh has yoked together man must not separate. And in the house again the students questioned him concerning this, and he says to them, Whoever would put away his wife and marry another commits adultery against her, and if she divorcing her husband marries another, she commits adultery. And they had brought to him children in order that he may engage with them. But the students admonished them, and seeing it, Yeshua was annoyed and said to them, Let the children come to me. Do not prevent them, for of such as these is the kingdom of Yahweh. Truly, I say to you, whoever would not receive the kingdom of Yahweh as a child by no means could enter into it. And taking them in his arms, he blesses them, putting the hands upon them, and upon his going out on a journey, one having run up and falling at his knees, asked him, Good teacher, what shall I do in order that I may inherit eternal life? Then Yeshua said to him, Why call me good? No one is good except one, Yahweh. Know the commandments. You should not murder. You should not commit adultery. You should not steal. You should not testify falsely. You should not rob. Honor your father and your mother. Then he said to him, Teacher, all of these things I have kept from my youth. And Yeshua, looking at him, cherished him and said to him, One thing you are wanting, go, sell whatever you have and give to the poor, and you shall have treasure in heaven. And come, follow me. But being depressed by this word, he left grieving, for he was holding much property. And looking around, Yeshua says to his students, How difficultly those having money enter into the kingdom of Yahweh. But the students were amazed by his words. So again, Yahshua replying says to them, Children, how difficult it is to enter into the kingdom of Yahweh. It is easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of Yahweh. But they were more abundantly astonished, saying to him, Then who is able to be saved? Looking at them, Yahshua says, With man it is impossible, but not with Yahweh, for all things are possible with Yahweh. Petros began to say to him, Look, we have left all things and have followed you. Yahshua said, Truly I say to you, there is no one who has left house or brother or sister or mother or father or children or farm because of me and because of the good message, if he should not receive a hundredfold now at this time, houses and brothers and sisters and mothers and children and farms, along with persecutions, and in the age which is coming eternal life. But many first shall be last, and the last first. Then they were on the road going up to Jerusalem, and Yahshua was going before them, and they were amazed, but those following him feared, and again taking aside the twelve, he began to tell them the things being about to happen to him, that, Behold, we go up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man shall be handed over to the high priests and the scribes, and they shall condemn him to death, and they shall hand him over to the heathens, and they shall mock him, and spit upon him, and whip and slay him. And after three days he shall arise. And James and Johannes, the sons of Zebedaios, go forth to him, saying to him, Teacher, we desire that whatever we may ask you, you would do for us. So he said to them, What do you desire of me that I shall do for you? Then they said to him, Give to us that we may sit one at your right hand and one at your left hand in your honor. So Yahshua said to them, You do not know what you ask. Are you able to drink the cup which I shall drink, or to be immersed in the immersion which I am immersed? Then they said to him, We are able. So Yahshua said to them, The cup which I drink you shall drink, and the immersion which I am immersed in you shall be immersed. 
but to sit at my right or left hand is not mine to give, but for those whom it has been prepared. And hearing it, the ten began to be annoyed with James and Johannes, and summoning them, Yahshua says to them, You know that those supposing to rule over the nations lord over them, and their nobles exercise authority over them, but it is not so with you. Rather, he whom should desire to become great among you shall be your servant, and he whom should desire to be first among you shall be your slave. For even the Son of Man has come not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life a ransom for the sake of many. And they came into Eureko, and upon his departing from Eureko, and of his students, and of a considerable crowd, Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, a blind beggar, sat by the road, and hearing that it is Yahshua the Nazarene, he began to cry out and to say, Yahshua, son of David, have mercy on me. And many admonished him that he should be silent, but still more he cried out, Son of David, have mercy on me. And stopping, Yahshua said, Call him. And they called the blind man, saying to him, Have courage, arise, he calls you. Then, casting off his garment, leaping up, he came to Yahshua, and responding to him, Yahshua said, What do you wish that I shall do for you? So the blind man said to him, Rabboni, that I may see again. And Yahshua said to him, Go, your faith has saved you. And immediately he saw again, and he followed him on the road. And when they approached to Jerusalem, to Bethphage and Bethania, towards the Mount of Olives. He sends two of his students, and says to them, Go into the village opposite you, and immediately going into it, you shall find a leashed colt, upon which not one man has ever yet sat. Release and bring it. And if anyone should ask you, Why do you do this? You say, The prince has need of it, and immediately he sends it back here. And they went off and found a colt leashed at a door outside by the street, and they released it. And some of those standing there said to them, What do you do, releasing the colt? Then they spoke to them, just as Yahshua has said, and they permitted them. And they bring the colt to Yahshua, and put their garments upon it, and he sat upon it. And many spread their garments in the road, but others straw, having been cut from the fields. And those going ahead and those following cried out, O oh, salvation! Blessed is he coming in the name of Yahweh! Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David! O oh, salvation in the heights! And he entered into Jerusalem, into the temple, and having looked around at everything, it already being of a late hour, he went out into Bethania with the twelve. And in the morning, upon his coming out from Bethania, he hungered, and seeing a fig tree from afar off having leaves, he went, if then he should find something in it, and coming to it he found nothing except leaves, for it was not the season for figs. And responding he said to it, No longer forever should anyone eat fruit from you. And the students heard him. And they come into Jerusalem, and upon entering into the temple, he began to cast out the dealers and buyers in the temple, and he overturned the tables of the bankers and the seats of those selling doves, and he did not allow that anyone should carry baggage through the temple. And he instructed and said to them, Is it not written that my house shall be called a house of prayer for all the nations? But you have made it a den of robbers. And the high priests and the scribes heard it, and they sought how they could destroy him, for they feared him, for all the crowd was astonished by his teaching. And when it became late, they went outside of the city, and passing by in the morning they saw the fig tree had withered from the roots, and Petros remembering says to him, Rabbi, look, the fig tree which you have cursed is withered. And responding, Yahshua says to him, do you have faith in Yahweh? Truly I say to you, that he who should say to this mountain, Be taken up and cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but would believe that that which he speaks shall happen, it shall be for him. 
For this reason I say to you, all things, whatever you pray for and you request, believe that you have received, and it shall be for you. And when you stand praying, forgive it if you have anything against someone, in order that also your Father who is in the heavens would forgive for you your transgressions. And they go again into Jerusalem. And upon his walking in the temple, the high priests and the scribes and the elders come to him. And they said to him, By what authority do you do these things? Or who has given you this authority that you should do these things? So Yahshua said to them, I shall ask you one question, and you answer me, and I shall tell you by what authority I do these things. The immersion of Johannes, was it from of heaven or from of men? Answer me. And they disputed among themselves, saying, If we should say, From of heaven, he shall say, Then for what reason had you not believed him? But should we say, From of men? They feared the crowd, for they all held Johannes as being that he was a prophet. And replying to Yahshua, they say, We do not know. And Yahshua says to them, Neither do I tell you by what authority I do these things. And he began to speak to them in parables. A man planted a vineyard and put a fence around it and dug a vat and built a tower and let it out to husbandmen and he travelled abroad. And he sent a servant to the husbandmen at the appropriate time in order that he would receive from the husbandmen from the fruits of the vineyard. And taking him they cudgelled him and sent him away empty. And again he sent to them another servant, and him they hit on the head and dishonoured. And he sent another, and him they slew, and many others, some then being cudgelled, but some being slain. Yet he had one beloved son. He sent him to them last, saying that they shall respect my son. But those husbandmen said to themselves that this is the heir. Come, we should kill him, and the inheritance shall be ours and taking him they killed him and cast him outside of the vineyard. So what shall the master of the vineyard do? He shall come and destroy those husbandmen and let the vineyard out to others. Have you not even read this scripture? The stone which the builders have rejected, this has come to be for the head cornerstone. By Yahweh has this been done, and it is a wonder in our eyes. And they sought to seize him, yet they feared the crowd, for they knew that he had spoken the parable against them, and leaving him they departed. And they send to him certain of the Pharisees and of the Herodians, in order that they may entrap him in speech. And coming they say to him, Teacher, we know that you are true, and in you there is no thought for any one, For you do not look at the stature of men, but by truth you teach the way of God. Is it lawful to give tax to Caesar or not? Should we give or should we not give? But he, knowing their hypocrisy, said to them, Why do you try me? Bring to me a denarian that I may see. And they brought it. And he says to them, Whose image is this and the inscription? Then they said to him, Caesar's. And Yahshua said to them, Render to Caesar the things of Caesar, and to Yahweh the things of Yahweh. And they marveled at him. And the Sadducees come to him, who say there is not to be a resurrection, and they questioned him, saying, Teacher, Moses wrote for us that if a brother of one should die and leaves a wife, and should not leave a child, that his brother should take the wife and raise up offspring for his brother. There were seven brothers, and the first had taken a wife, and dying had not left offspring, and the second had taken her, and he died not leaving offspring, and the third likewise, and the seven had not left offspring. Last of all, the wife also died. In the resurrection of which of them shall be the wife? For the seven had her as a wife. Yahshua said to them, Aren't you for this reason deceived, not knowing the writings nor the power of Yahweh? For when they should arise from among the dead, they shall neither marry nor do they give in marriage, but they shall be as the messengers in the heavens. But concerning the dead that they are raised, have you not read in the book of Moses? 
at the bramble bush how Yahweh had spoken to him, saying, I am the God of Abraham and the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob. Yahweh is not of the dead, but of the living. You are greatly deceived. And coming forth, one of the scribes, having heard their disputing, seeing that he answered them well, questioned him, What is the first of all commandments? Yahshua replied that first is, Hear, O Israel, Yahweh is our God, there is only one Yahweh. And you shall love Yahweh your God from your whole heart and from your whole soul and from your whole mind and from your whole strength. Second is this, You shall love him near to you as yourself. No other commandment is greater than this. And the scribe said to him, Good teacher, with truth you have spoken that he is one and there is not another except him, and for which to love him from the whole heart and from the whole conscience and from the whole strength, and for which to love him near to you as yourself is greater than every whole burnt offering and sacrifice. And Yahshua, seeing him, that he replied sensibly, said to him, you are not far from the kingdom of Yahweh. And no one any longer dared to question him. And responding, Yeshua said, teaching in the temple, How do the scribes say that the Christ is a son of David? David himself said by the Holy Spirit, Yahweh said to my master, Sit at my right hand until when I shall place your enemies beneath your feet. David himself declares him master, and how is he his son? And the large crowd heard him gladly. And in his teaching he said, Beware of those scribes who desire to walk about in robes and greetings in the marketplaces and the first benches in the assembly halls and the best seats at the dinners. They are devouring the house of widows and with pretense make prayers at length. They shall receive a greater judgment. And being seated opposite the treasury, he observed how the crowd casts coin into the treasury, and many wealthy had cast much. And coming, one poor widow had cast two lepta, which is a quadrants, and summoning his students, he said to them, Truly I say to you that this poor widow has cast more than all of those casting into the treasury, for they all have cast from out of their abundance, but she from her want has cast all whatever she had, her whole substance. And upon his going out from the temple, one of his students says to him, Teacher, behold what quality stones and what quality buildings. And Yahshua said to him, You see these great buildings? By no means should there be left here a stone upon a stone which would not be thrown down. And upon his being seated in the Mount of Olives opposite the temple, they questioned him by themselves, Petros and James and Johannes and Andreas. Tell us, when shall these things be, and what is the sign when all these things would be about to be accomplished? Then Yahshua began to speak to them, Watch that not any one would deceive you. Many shall come in my name, saying that I am he, and they shall deceive many. But when you should hear of wars and reports of wars, do not be troubled. It needs to happen, but not yet is the end. For nation shall arise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There shall be earthquakes in various places, there shall be famines. These things are the beginning of travails. But you watch out for yourselves. They shall hand you over to councils, and you shall be beaten in assembly halls, and you shall be made to stand before governors and kings because of me, for a testimony to them. And in all the nations it is first necessary for the good message to be proclaimed. And when they bring you handing you over, do not practice beforehand what you should say, but that which should be given to you at that hour, this you shall say. For it is not you who are speaking, but the Holy Spirit. And brother shall hand over brother unto death, and father child, and children shall rise up against parents, and shall slay them and you shall be hated by all on account of my name. But he, abiding to the end, he shall be saved. Then when you should see the abomination of desolation standing where it is not proper, he, reading, must understand. Then those in Judea must flee into the mountains. 
He upon the housetop must not go down nor enter in to take anything from his house, and he who is in the field must not turn back to the things behind to take his garment. But woe to those being pregnant and with infants in those days, and you must pray that it would not be winter. For there shall be tribulation in those days of a sort that has not happened such as this from the beginning of the creation which Yahweh had created until now, and shall not happen. And unless Yahweh has shortened the days, not any flesh would be saved. But on account of the elect whom he has chosen, he has shortened the days. And at that time, if one should say to you, Look, here is the Christ, and... Look there, do not believe it. For there shall arise false Christs and false prophets, and they shall give signs and wonders for which to lead astray, if possible, the elect. But you watch. I have told all these things to you beforehand. But in those days with that tribulation the sun shall be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall be falling from out of heaven, and the powers which are in the heavens shall be shaken. And then they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with much power and effulgence. And then he shall send the messengers, and they shall gather his elect out of the four winds, from the end of the earth unto the end of heaven. But you learn from the parable of the fig tree, when already its branches should be tender and it would produce leaves, you know that summer is near. Thusly also you... When you should see these things happening, you know that it is near by the doors. Truly, I say to you that by no means should this race escape until when all these things should happen. The heaven and the earth shall pass, but my word shall by no means pass. But concerning that day or the hour, no one knows, neither the messengers in heaven nor the Son, except the Father. You watch, be wakeful, for you do not know when the time is. As a man travelling abroad has left his house and given to his slaves authority for each his work and orders the doorkeeper that he should be alert, therefore you be alert. For you do not know when the master of the house comes, whether late or at midnight or at the cockcrow or in morning. Not coming suddenly he should find you sleeping. And that which I say to you, I say to all, be alert. And it was Passover, and the feast of unleavened bread after two days. And the high priests and the scribes sought how seizing him with guile they could kill him. For they said, Not on the feast, that at no time shall there be an uproar by the people. And with his being in Bethania at the house of Simon the leper, upon his reclining came a woman having a box of pure ointment of spikenard of great value. Breaking the box, she poured it on his head, but there were some getting annoyed between themselves. For what has this waste of the ointment occurred? For this ointment was able to be sold for over three hundred denarii and to be given to the poor. And they admonished her. But Yahshua said, Allow her. Why do you cause trouble for her? She has performed a good deed on me, for always do you have the poor among yourselves, and whenever you should desire, you are able to do good for them. But me you do not always have. That which she had means of she has done. She has anticipated to rub my body with ointment for burial. Truly I say to you, wherever the good message should be proclaimed in all society, also that which she has done shall be spoken for a memorial of her. And Judas Iscariot, who is one of the twelve, had gone out to the high priests in order that he could betray him to them, and they, hearing it, rejoiced and promised to give him silver. And he sought how he could betray him opportunely. And on the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, when the Passover is sacrificed, his students say to him, How do you wish departing we may prepare in order that you may eat the Passover? And he sends two of his students and says to them, Go into the city, and a man carrying a jar of water shall meet you. Follow him, and wherever he should enter, you say to the master of the house that, The teacher says, Where are my quarters where I shall eat the Passover with my students? 
and he shall show you a spacious, furnished, prepared upper room, and there you shall prepare it for us. And the students went out and came into the city and found just as he said to them. And they prepared the Passover, and with it becoming late he comes with the twelve, and upon their reclining and eating, Yahshua said, Truly I say to you that one from among you who is eating with me shall betray me. They began to grieve, and to say to him one by one, Is it I? Then he said to them, One of the twelve, he dipping with me into the same bowl, because indeed the Son of Man shall go just as it is written concerning him. But woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is handed over. It is good for him if that man had not been born. And upon their eating, taking a loaf, blessing, he broke and gave it to them and said, You take, this is my body. And taking a cup, giving thanks, he gave it to them, and they all drank from it. And he said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which is being poured out on behalf of many. Truly I say to you that by no means shall I any longer drink from of the produce of the vine until that day when I shall drink it anew in the kingdom of Yahweh. And singing hymns they went out to the Mount of Olives, and Yahshua says to them that all shall be made to stumble, because it is written, I shall smite the shepherd, and the sheep shall be scattered. But after what it takes for me to be raised, I shall go before you into Galilee. Then Petros said to him, If even all are made to stumble, yet not I. And Yahshua says to him, Truly I say to you that today on this night, before a cock crows twice three times, should you deny me. But more exceedingly, he said, If it should be necessary for me to die with you, by no means shall I deny you. Then likewise also they all spoke. And they came into a place of which the name is Gethsemane, and he says to his students, Sit here while I shall pray, and he takes Petros and James and Johannes with him. And he began to be terrified and to be troubled, and he says to them, My soul is deeply grieved, even unto death, Remain here and stay awake. And having gone forth a little, he fell upon the ground and prayed that if it is possible, the hour should pass from him. And he said, Abba, Father, all things are possible for you. Set aside this cup from me, yet it is not what I desire, but what you do. And he comes and finds them sleeping and says to Petros, Simon, you sleep? Are you not able for one hour to stay awake? Stay awake and pray that you should not enter into trial. Indeed, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. And again, having departed, he prayed, saying the same word. And again, having come, he found them sleeping, for their eyes were weighed down, and they did not know what they could reply to him. And he comes for a third time and says to them, You sleep? Finally, then, are you rested? It is enough. The hour has come. Behold, the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of wrongdoers. Arise, we must go. Behold, he who is betraying me is near. And immediately upon his speaking, Judas arrives, one of the twelve, and with him a crowd with swords and clubs from the high priests and the scribes and the elders. And he who is betraying him gave to them a signal, saying, he whom I should kiss is he, seize and lead him away securely. And having come immediately coming forth to him, he says, Rabbi, and he kissed him. Then they threw the hands upon him and seized him. Then a certain one of those who stood nearby drawing the sword smote the servant of the high priest and took off his ear. And responding, Yahshua said to them, as for a robber, have you come out with swords and clubs to take me? Each day I was with you in the temple, teaching, and you did not seize me. But it is in order that the writings should be fulfilled. And leaving him, they all fled. And a certain youth who had followed him had been wrapped in a linen cloth, for he was naked, and they seize him. 
but he, leaving behind the linen cloth, fled naked. And they brought Yahshua off to the high priest, and all the high priests and the elders and the scribes gathered together to him. And Petros from afar had followed him until inside in the court of the high priest, and he was sitting together with the deputies and warming himself by the fire. Then the high priests and the whole council sought testimony against Yahshua for which to kill him, and they found it not, for many had testified falsely against him, and the testimonies were not the same. And some arising gave false testimony against him, saying that, We heard him saying that I shall destroy this temple made by hand, and after three days I shall build another not made by hand. Yet not even thusly was their testimony the same. And the high priest arising into the middle questioned Yahshua, saying, Would you not answer anything to what they testify against you? But he was silent and did not reply anything. Again the high priest questioned him and says to him, Are you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed One? Then Yahshua said, I am and you shall see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of power and coming with the clouds of heaven. And the high priest, having torn his garments, says, Why do we have further need of testimonies? You have heard the blasphemy. What does it appear to you? Then they all judged him to be liable for death. And some began to spit at him and to put a cover around his face and to beat him and to say to him, Prophesy, and the deputies with blows took him. And Petros being down in the court, one of the servant girls of the high priest comes. And seeing Petros warming himself, looking at him, she says, You also were with the Nazarene Yahshua. But he denied it, saying, Neither do I know nor do I understand what you say. And he went outside into the front yard, and a cock crowed. And the servant girl, seeing him, said to those who stood nearby that he is from among them. But again he denied it. And after a while those who stood nearby again said to Petros, Truly you are from among them, for you also are a Galilean. But he began to curse and to swear that I do not know this man whom you speak of. And immediately a cock crowed for a second time. And Petros remembered the word as Yahshua spoke to him, that before a cock crows twice three times should you deny me. And considering it he wept. And immediately at morning making counsel, the high priests with the elders and the scribes and all the council, binding Yahshua, they led him off and turned him over to Pilatos. And Pilatos questioned him, Are you king of the Judeans? Then responding to him, he says, You say. And the high priests accuse him of many things. Then Pilatos questioned him again, saying, Would you not answer anything? Look at how many things they accuse you of. But Yahshua did not yet answer anything, consequently for Pilatos to wonder. Now each feast he released for them one prisoner whom they interceded for. And there was he called Barabbas, bound with those rebels who in the sedition committed a murder. And the crowd going up began to request just as he did for them. Then... Pilatos replied to them, saying, Do you desire that I shall release for you the king of the Judeans? For he knew that on account of envy the high priests handed him over. But the high priests agitated the crowd in order that still more he should release Barabbas for them. Then Pilatos, responding again, said to them, So what shall I do with he whom you say is king of the Judeans? And again they cried out, Crucify him! So Pilatos said to them, For what evil has he done? Then exceedingly they cried out, Crucify him! Then Pilatos, determining to do that which is satisfactory for the crowd, released Barabbas for them, and scourging Yahshua handed him over that he would be crucified. Then the soldiers led him off into the court, which is the praetorium, and they called together the whole cohort, and they put on him a purple cloth, and bestowed upon him a crown of braided thorns. And they began to salute him, Hail, King of the Judeans! 
and they beat his head with a reed, and spat at him, and kneeling made obeisance to him. And when they had mocked him, they took the purple cloth off of him, and put on him his garments. And they lead him out, in order that they may crucify him. And they conscript a certain Curanian passing by, Simon coming from a farm, the father of Alexandros and Rufos, in order that he would take his cross. And they bring him upon the place Golgotha, which is interpreted place of the skull. And they had given to him wine flavoured with myrrh, but which he did not take. And they crucify him, and part his garments, casting lots for them, for what any one should take. Now it was the third hour, and they crucified him. And there was an inscription of his charge, having been inscribed, The King of the Judeans. And with him they crucify two robbers, one on the right and one on his left. And those going by blasphemed him, shaking their heads and saying, Ha! He destroying the temple and building it in three days? Save yourself descending from the cross. Likewise also the high priests, mocking between one another with the scribes, said, He has saved others. Himself he is not able to save. Christ, King of Israel, Descend from the cross now that we would see and believe. And those crucified together with him reproached him. And with the sixth hour coming there was darkness upon the whole land until the ninth hour. And in the ninth hour Yahshua cried out with a great voice, Eloi, Eloi, lema sabachthani, which is interpreted, My God, my God, for what reason have you abandoned me? And some of those who stood nearby, hearing it, said, Look, he calls Elijah. Then someone running and filling a sponge with vinegar, placing it around a reed, gave him to drink, saying, Permit it, we may see if Elijah comes to take him down. But Yahshua, emitting a great sound, expired, and the curtain of the temple had torn in two from the top unto the bottom. And seeing it, the centurion who stood nearby from opposite him that thusly he expired, said, Truly this man was a son of God. And there were women observing from afar, among whom were also Mariam the Magdalene, and Maria the mother of the lesser James, and the mother of Joseph and Salome, who when he was in Galilee followed him and served him, and many other women came up with him to Jerusalem. And already upon it being late, since it was the preparation day which is before the Sabbath, Joseph from Harimathiah having come, an honourable counsellor who also himself was expecting the kingdom of Yahweh, having undertaken it, he entered into Pilatos and requested the body of Yahshua. But Pilatos wondered if he had already died, and summoning the centurion questioned him if he had long been dead, and knowing from the centurion he granted the corpse to Yosef. And purchasing a linen cloth, having taken him down, he wrapped him in the linen cloth, and set him in a tomb which was hewn out of bedrock, and he rolled a stone over the door of the tomb. And Maria the Magdalene and Maria the mother of Joses observed where he was laid. And upon the passing of the Sabbath, Maria the Magdalene and Maria the mother of James and Salome purchased herbs in order that having come they may anoint him. And very early in the morning on the first day of the week they come to the tomb upon the rising of the sun. And they said to themselves, Who shall roll away for us the stone from the door of the tomb? And looking up they observed that the stone had been rolled away, for it was exceedingly large. And having entered into the tomb, they saw a youth sitting on the right, clothed in a white robe, and they were astounded. Then he says to them, Do not be astonished. You seek Yahshua the Nazarene, who had been crucified. He has arisen. He is not here. Behold the place where they laid him. But you go tell his students and Petros that he goes on before you into Galilee. There you shall see him, just as he said to you. And having gone out, they fled from the tomb, for trembling and astonishment held them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. Did you enjoy this audiobook? 
The rest of the Christogenia New Testament is available to read freely on Christogenia.org. There you will find a plethora of free essays to read from and podcasts to listen to, thorough biblical commentaries and historical essays. You may also, if interested, order a soft cover of the Christogenia New Testament. We also at truthvids.net have a collection of articles and videos available to learn from for free. Thank you for listening, and praise Yahweh, the God of Israel.